I'm Mattis Stace, Token Design Lead at uh, Althaya Ventures, and this is the first video of a new Althaya Ventures series of videos where we're going to cover a wide range of topics such as token design, token economics, mechanism design, and token engineering. Um, Althaya Ventures or I may hold tokens mentioned on the show, um, but nothing said here constitutes financial advice, so please do your own research before making any investment decisions. The goal of this series is to shed more light on token design approaches that are currently being used in Web3 and DeFi, um, as well as to discuss experimental approaches that can advance token ecosystems and um, open up new avenues for innovation. Each episode is going to feature a guest with um, background and experience in token design, and we are going to be talking about mechanisms in token architectures of various crypto protocols. In the first episode, which is going to be a slightly different format, um, I'm going to walk you through the Alpha Ventures framework for understanding and designing mechanisms in token architectures. I have also just released a detailed blog post on this topic, so please feel free to check it out. I'll put the link in the description. All right, um, let's jump into the presentation. Okay, so let's talk about how token architectures impact token value. Token value is a bit of an elusive concept because different token holders can attribute different amounts of value to a token based on their specific needs and wants. So when assessing token architectures, it's much easier to look at them through the lenses of token price. Um, token price is a numerical manifestation of token value. It's, um, it's simply a point where demand meets supply at any given point in time. Uh, and, and, and token prices can generally be broken down into two components, um, the speculative component and the fundamental component. The speculative component of token price is subject to market forces and driven mostly by sentiment and perception. Token architectures don't, don't really, really have direct impact on the speculative component of token price, but uh, that doesn't mean people's perception of the quality of your token uh, is not going to have any influence here. In other words, even if your token architecture is not functional, but it's perceived as functional, the price of your token is expected to be positively impacted. Um, currently, the vast majority of prices of crypto assets are made up mostly of the speculative component. All right, uh, moving on to the more interesting component of token prices. Um, the fundamental component tells us how fundamentally valuable the token is. In other words, what is the actual quantifiable usefulness of our token to different stakeholder groups? Um, the fundamental component can further be decomposed into the protocol service component and the token architecture component. In most cases, tokens are tied to a certain protocol, and the purpose of these protocols is to provide services to stakeholders. And um, the protocol serv service component of token price tells us how valuable these services on average are. And, and generally speaking, if the value of the protocol service is at least remotely tied to the token uh, and the value of the protocol service is high, um, the token price is expected to be positively, positively impacted. Uh, and then the token architecture component represents the value of uh, how well the token is designed. Um, token architectures are basically structures made up of different stakeholder groups bound together by a set of mechanisms which, which determine and, and limit the behavior of these, of these stakeholder groups. And yeah, coming on to the breakdown uh, of, of token architecture mechanisms. Uh, so basically, we've identified three main types of mechanisms that can be used uh, in token architectures. And those are utility mechanisms, governance mechanisms, and distribution mechanisms. Um, utility mechanisms determine what functionalities the token has uh, in relation to the underlying protocol. And governance mechanisms determine what role tokens play in governing the protocol. And distribution mechanisms determine how tokens are distributed to different stakeholders. Um, for the purpose of this short episode, we are only going to dive deeper into utility mechanisms and leave the rest for later episodes. So when you're designing your utility mechanisms, um, the rule of thumb is that a good utility mechanism either adds functionality to the token or reduces the velocity of the token, and ideally both at the same time. 
So token velocity is the number of times a token changes hands within a certain time frame. And you really want to come up with mechanisms that prevent your token from changing hands too often, because if they do, um, the prices of these tokens usually suffer. And, and there's a couple of ways to achieve this. Um, for example, if you choose to Im implement a staking mechanism, um, you will be reducing the circulating supply of your tokens in relation to the total supply of your tokens. So, you know, some of the tokens will be locked in, in smart contracts or generally somewhere uh, where it's, uh, it's kind of less likely uh, for people to sell them. So if we take Filecoin for, uh, as an example, uh, Filecoin is a decentralized network for sharing uh, idle storage resources. So if you have an unused hard disk, you can plug it into the network, um, other people can use it and you'll get paid. Um, but if you want to provide storage to the protocol, um, you are required to stake a certain amount of Filecoin to tokens into the protocol. And uh, this mechanism has a wide range of positive consequences for its token architecture, such as that um, it creates buy pressure for the token, because in order to be able to provide your storage resources to Filecoin, you first need to go to the market uh, buy and, and buy some Filecoin tokens. Uh, it also reduces the velocity of the token because you need to stake tokens before participating. And this prevents you from, you know, um, in theory, from behaving in a malicious way, because, because if you do behave in a malicious way, uh, there's a good chance you're going to lose your stake tokens. Um, and, and yeah, and there's a, there's a whole range of additional types of staking mechanisms. Um, and, uh, I am dissecting them in more detail in my blog post. So please check it out if you're, if you're interested. And um, yeah, and in terms of other utility mechanisms we can use in our token architecture, uh, in addition to staking mechanisms, we have the mint and burn mechanism, the fee distribution mechanism, and the discount mechanism. So the mint and burn mechanism uh, basically it reduces the, the total supply of your tokens by, by burning them and currently used by, by protocols like MakerDAO and um, by, you know, by a whole bunch of uh, exchange coins such as FT, FTT, uh, BNB, and the Huobi token. Um, then we have the fee distribution mechanism, which uh, implements or, or, or increases fee distribution to token holders, and that's pretty straightforward. Um, some of the projects that are using this mechanism are SushiSwap and Synthetix, and then Finally, we have the discount mechanism, and uh, basically that's all about implementing a discount mechanism into your token, which would then let users pay less for the underlying utility of the protocol uh, than they would if they did not own or did not use the token. And this concludes the high-level summary of all the utility mechanisms we can use in our token architectures, and hopefully it was helpful in giving you an idea on one of the many possible ways to approach token architecture design. And, um, and yeah, and if you want to dive deeper into these mechanisms, uh, be sure to check out my blog post. Um, the link is in the description. And, and yeah, and a couple of words about, about Outlier Ventures and, uh, and what we do. So basically, Outlier Ventures has been investing and accelerating the Web3 ecosystem since 2013. Uh, in 2019, we launched Basecamp. Uh, which is an accelerator, pro accelerator program for pre-seed startups operating in DeFi, NFTs, and open data. Um, yeah, we provide capital and help with your token design, uh, access to our network of the best investors and founders of Web3, um, back office support and, and, and mentorship and a whole range of other, other things. So if you are a Web3 founder, uh, be sure to check it out. The applications are now open. And that's it. Thank you very much for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you in next episodes.